Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today's build is going to be a Damascus Viking Spear, and it's going to have the River of Fire pattern on it. Let's get started. You can think of the River of Fire pattern as a wavy feather, so we're going to be doing Feather Damascus. We start by welding up this stack and getting it in the forge. After a little dip in kerosene to help with the forge weld, we're going to get it in the forge. Then after it heats up, we're just going to hit it with a little flux. The first step is to forge weld this stack together. The graphic in the corner will represent what's going on with the billet. Before we get too much further, I want to grind out that weld I put on the side of the billet, just so we don't end up pressing that in. We don't want any mild steel in our billet. The billet is all forge welded together, I've drawn it out a little bit, now it's time to impart some pattern. I've put in the squaring dies, now we're trying to get the pattern in the corner. Now we're back to the flat dies and we're going to turn this pattern into a bar and get what you see here. We're going to be restacking these bars on top of each other, so we need to draw this bar out pretty long so we can cut it up into a bunch of pieces. Now I'm just squaring up the corners to get ready for a restack. Here it is, restacked back in the forge. This will give us the pattern you see in the corner. Just like last time, we're going to forge weld this stack together and then draw it out into a nice long bar that we can cut up and restack again.
Well, folks, I lost a bit of footage of uh, a restack and drawing that bar out lengthwise. Um, so you get the idea. It was restacked, stretched out, and now we're going to go cut it up. So here we are so far. I've ground the bar nice and flat on the surface grinder. Now I've cut it into equal pieces and numbered those pieces. One through eight. Okay, now we're just going to do this to the pieces and then stack them up. This will ensure that all of our ends meet up correctly. We're going to forge weld this all together, then split it down the center. Once we have this tall stack all forge welded together and squared up, we're going to put it in the press and drive a big stake through it. And that's going to split it in two and cause the pattern in the corner. Splitting this stack gave me a few headaches, but I finally got it done. Now we're just going to square these up and get ready to forge weld them back together. Okay, so here we are so far. We split the feather. I've ground the sides. This one was a little thicker uh, this way, so I ended up pressing it um, and just grinding it a bit to get them all the same. And then I've taken a bunch of 1080, this was just happened to be the thickest 1080 that I had, and I've stacked this up. And you'll see in the next step what I'm going to do here. So now we're going to forge weld this all together this way. Now that this stack is all forge welded together, just like always, we're going to square it up and then I'm going to draw it out a little bit just so I get the length that I need. Now it's time to make that wavy feather. I've drawn scallops on the side of this billet and we're going to grind away opposing scallop. Then when we reforge this, it's going to make that feather snake back and forth. If you're looking for a 2x72 grinder like mine, my friends at Broadbeck Ironworks have a great sale. Go check it out. Now it's time to forge this down and remove those scallops. It doesn't look like it's doing anything now, but just wait. Now it's time to start forging our spear shape. The back end of the spear we obviously want wider, so here I'm using my fullering dies just to widen that part. Remember, the feather is in the center and there's bands of 1080 on either side. We want that feather to come to the point. 
So I'm using my fullerene dies to pinch that point so that the feather will come right to the tip. Now it's time to move to the anvil and a hand hammer for the finish work. I want to make sure that the feather is perfectly aligned in the center and serpentines down the blade. In places where it's too close to the edge, I just hammer a bit and thin that out and that will push it back towards the center. After a quick check on my dimensions, everything looks pretty good. I'm getting really close. So here it is after forging. Um, pretty happy with how it's turned out. It uh, pretty much matches my design. A tiny bit shorter, but nothing I'm going to get worried about. Um, when these things get ground, we'll have a nice sharp point in here. And you guys don't really see it, but the feather just kind of meanders down the blade. I really, really like it. And you can see here that it's... It's got super thin as it gets right to the tip. So I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Now we're going to put a little bit of profile on it, but not too much, um, because we need to forge weld the socket on. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit, um, cut this off, um, and get ready for this forge weld. The only reason I'm going to um, do the profile is just to make sure I have it centered up here. But um, no sense, this is going to go back in the forge again for the forge weld, so there's no sense grinding all the scale or anything off of it just yet. Let's move on to the socket and get this going. So the socket is going to be a piece of this. This is inch and a half, just 1045 steel. What I'm going to do is cut a section of this off, and I'm actually going to do the cone, um, the socket, in the lathe. We're going to make the interior cone here with one of these. So I'm just going to drill all the way through this. Okay, That'll create um, kind of a channel. It'll be about 5 inches. And then I have a boring bar that I'm going to do to widen it so it's cone shaped through here. And then of course we're going to come back and taper it this way. And um, then we'll cut a slot so we can forge weld this to it. While this may look quick in the video, this was a better part of two hours to get this done. So 
So here we are so far. Here's the socket. Um, and I just radius this because this, we're going to cut a slot in this, mill a slot, mill this flat, and then put that about there. And then TIG weld it, forge weld it. So let's go to the mill, flatten this out, do our slot. So I cut the slot, I didn't bother videotaping that, but I've cut the slot on the mill, fit it in, now we're just going to TIG weld the seams, and then we're going to forge weld it. So let's get to welding. I've successfully got the socket TIG welded to the spearhead, now it's time to get it in the forge so we can forge weld it together. We're going to be doing this by hand on the anvil. So here it is after forging, um, really happy with it. Um, it forge welded just perfectly. There's a little bit more of a divot here than I wanted, but that's fine. I'm just gonna just taper this just a little bit to take that out. Then we'll get all the forge scale off of it. Uh, I tried to keep as much forge scale as I could off of this since it already had a nice finish on it. So it stayed pretty good. So we'll just have to kind of grind that down, but now let's get all this off, put the profile to it, and then we'll get to grinding bevels. Here we are so far, got the socket all nice and ground to 120. I uh, did a bunch of file work to get these the same, these transitions. And then ground the blade, it's just under a quarter here and it tapers just a little bit. So now, we're ready to put in the bevels. Let's put some scribe lines on it. Time to drill the pinholes. I've already normalized this, this is why it doesn't look as shiny as it did before. Here we go, time for the heat treat. This is what's going to turn it into a real blade. I had to be careful here, because the socket is full of hot oil right now. This is a 65 HRC file. After being tempered at 400 degrees for a while, it's time to do the final grinding. So I wanted to show you guys where we are so far. I've done a bit of sanding. Uh, only got this to 220 so far, um, but it looks really nice. The, um, the socket came out really nice so far. I uh, did a lot of work on this area here just to get a really nice um, transition here on both sides. And you can see I still got a bit of sanding to do. But before I go too far and finish this off, I wanted to mount it and do some tests. Because I don't want to do a bunch of tests after I get it the nice Damascus pattern and risk scratching it, driving it into wood or anything like that. So we're going to test it first. So what I bought was 
it's really hard to find really long pieces of hardwood, so I just went to um, to Lowe's and I bought this stave, which is actually from a wheelbarrow, but it's hardwood. Um, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, I'm going to have to rip this down and, and curve it. Uh, the reason I'm not that concerned about this is this is a commission and it's actually going to get shipped without this. So this is really just for me to test it and to show you guys. So let's get this prepped. We'll get this mounted. Uh, I'll sharpen the edges and we'll do a little test. So I've coned the stave um, perfectly for this. You can see the marks all around. It was a matter of putting it in, spinning it, seeing what was touching, and then slowly grinding that. So we've got it to the point where it fits in nicely. You can see it's, it's a good fit. Next is drilling the hole for the pin. Um, you don't want to just randomly try to drill this because they'll never match. So what I've done is Put the drill, put this in a vise. The drill bit I know goes right through both sides. Then I can just put the stave in and drill the hole. So let's do it. I built this wooden target so we could have a little fun with this spear. Well, that was pretty fun. Stabbing that target was pretty cool, and it uh, it threw pretty well. Did discover a few things, though. On one of those, when the uh, spear went in and kind of stuck in the side, it did bend the tip a little bit, um, which I had to take out, and in the process of um, grinding it out, I bent the very, very tip, which I just ground out a little bit. Um, what I learned was that the grind that I put on it was way, way too, um, uh, too much of a bevel. I think I had it at about 25 degrees. I need to put this at about 35 degrees, just so by the time it gets to the tip, it's, uh, it's not too thin here, because we want this central ridge to carry through. So I'm going to put more of an angle on it. That should definitely stiffen it up, but that's why we test these things. All right, let's finish her off finish the sanding and I'll show you how I'm going to etch it. So I got this whole thing sanded to 800. We're ready to etch it. So I want to put a nice design on the socket. So what I've done is I've laser etched this knot pattern um, I'll show a little video over here of how I did that. What I want to do is put this, and I made this um, just big enough so that it wraps around um, perfectly here. Uh, and this is a vinyl sticker, so I can take this off, stick it. Then what I'm going to do is use some of this pink nail polish that I stole from my wife. Don't tell her. Um, and I'm going to fill in the inside. Okay, as a resist, take the sticker off. Uh, I'm also going to do this one, so there'll be one up here like this. Uh, do the same thing, then take the stickers off, 
dip the whole um, spear in ferric chloride and it should leave that part nice and clear and etch the design. Honey, is that my nail polish you're using? No, of course not. Well, it looks like the resist worked okay. I've got the stickers removed, all cleaned up. This part with acetone, let's get it in the edge.